point your hands toward the altar and repeat after me. First Lady Jackson. First Lady Jackson. Oh, First Lady Jackson. Oh, First Lady Jackson. Give to me. Give to me. What the Lord has given to you. What the Lord has given to you. Amen. 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 Can y'all hear me okay? Amen. I want to step in up in prayer real quick. Father God, we thank you, Father. We honor you on today as we do every day, Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask that you use me to bring forth this word, Father God, to uplift, Father God, and to bless those that are here or over the airwaves on today, Lord. I ask that you touch each and every father here on today. Bless them, lift burdens, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we encourage them on today, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you've yet to do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. 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 What we're going to be talking about today um, is being a great example. Amen. Amen. Being a great example. And, and I want to honor God, our Father, um, as the head of my life. First in my life, and I thank him for all that he has done for me. Amen. Um, loving me when I didn't deserve, like, feel like I deserved love, he loved me anyways. Amen. 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 Being there for me um, whenever and however I needed him at the time. Amen. Um, I also want to honor my, my husband for the husband that he is, the father that he is. <laughs> the grandfather and godfather that he is, I want to honor him as well. Amen. Um, and all the fathers that are here on today, I want to honor you as well. Um, God has given fathers a great job in life to do. To lead and guide their families, to have a vision for their family. Um, and I want to say also to my husband, for I, I think, I'm thankful for who he is in Christ. Um, Amen. And how he lets God lead him in his life. Amen. 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 I thank him for putting up with me because I know I am sometimes pretty tough. <laughs> Just going to admit that. <laughs> so I thank him for putting up with me um, and for pursuing the vision that Christ has given him for our family and for this church. Uh, I thank him for following after Christ. Um, I want to thank the fathers also that are over the airwaves and honor them as well. Um, even those that don't consider themselves a father, you know, that could be a male figure in somebody's life as well. Amen. Um, you don't have to be a biological father to be a father. Amen. Amen. It's about leading whoever may be in your life in the right direction. You may not consider yourself as a biological father or even having children. Um, but helping to raise those children, it could be a niece or a nephew or somebody that you just cross paths with. You know, leading them in the right direction and being that example for them. Amen. Amen. Um, some people don't have male figures in their life, and so uh, you have you may be that only person that they see that is a male figure. You know, so uh, what we're going to talk about today is um, being that person that shows them who God is, and uh, being that great example that God would want you to be in their lives. Amen. Amen. Um. Even in my life, uh, you know, when my real dad wasn't there, um, there were people in my life that, you know, ministered to me and uh, tried to uh, give me good advice, even though I didn't take it sometimes. <laughs> That's how it is sometimes, right? We get good advice and we don't take it sometimes, but we live and learn, right? Um, and even my stepfather, who, who pretty much raised me, you know, when my dad wasn't around, too. Um, so it, it could be anybody in your life that is that male figure, right? Um, so it is a special privilege to be called father or a father figure in someone's life. Call, God calls himself father in our life with a capital F, right? Amen. And it is a special honor when he gives man that name as, as well with the small F, mm -hmm. father, okay. right? Um, you know, and sometimes we take that 
named for granted. Um, sometimes um, we don't treat each other the way that we should um, and respect each other the way that we should, right? Um, but God has uh, called himself our father. Um, and with that honor that God has given to you all with that word father, it also comes with a great and special responsibility. Amen. Um, being a great father requires so much patience. Uh, and I know seeing my husband and, and seeing him throughout the years and all the things that we've been through with our own children, um, you know, it does require a lot of patience, you know? And I honor you all today for having that kind of patience. Amen. <laughs> amen. Yes, amen. amen. Um, and it's just, you know, and it's just like God has so much patience with us, too. Yes, he does. You know, sometimes our children may take a wrong turn, and it's our responsibility to steer them back in the, on the right path. And that's just the way it is with God, our Father. Um he has so much patience with us over and over and over again. And um, he is that great example of being patient because I know even in my walk with Christ, you know, I haven't been the best child at some, in some times. And uh, there have been times that um, it was an uncomfortable situation because we, when we get disciplined and when, when we're going through something and God disciplines us, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. He loves us, and he tries to get us back on the path. And sometimes that's painful and hard because we don't want to listen and we want to do it our way. And sometimes that is how it is with our our children, our own children as well. You know, they want to do their own thing and they want to go and experience this, and you're trying to give them some advice and steer them back on the path, and they're a little hard headed sometimes, just like we were, right? Um, <laughs> so God has put you in places that you need to be and he has entrusted you to lead and guide those people that come across your path in the right way God has put you there for a reason God has put you as a father over the children that he has blessed you with for a reason and so you all have a job to do as well and he has entrusted you with that so we cannot be in, discouraging, but we have to be encouraging to those that are around us, right? Amen. Amen. So um, we're going to start off a little bit with um, Habakkuk 2 and 2. Because in being a good example, um, we have to have a vision for our family. And as a father figure... You should have a vision for, you know, yourself and your family, you know, goals that you have set for yourself, right? So we're going to go to Habakkuk 2 and 2, and you know, y'all know I like New Living Translation all the time, so I'm going to kind of stick with that a little bit today. So Habakkuk 2 and 2, it says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is a, for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. For it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. And some other versions of this say, write it down. Mm -hmm. Write my answer in large, clear letters on a tablet so that a runner can read it and everyone else. And it be plain. So what this is saying is write your vision down for your family. Write your goals down. Amen. Amen. You should be, as, as a father figure, you should have a vision not only for yourself but for your family. Where you want to go. The Amen. goals you want to achieve. And it may be something as simply, simple as I want to take a Disney vacation and take my family. Or, you know, write it down. When we write it down and you have a vision... For your family, you are bringing God in remembrance of his word. Amen. And not only are you bringing him in remembrance of it, I don't know about you all, but I have to write everything down. Somebody will tell me something, and I will write a little sticky note so I will not forget it. Mm -hmm. And I have to do that with a lot of things in my life because I, 
my job is crazy sometimes life is crazy and you forget things and I write things down and um, I tell you I have so many lists and I have a war board that that I write things on as well that's between me and God and um, I have written down so many things and lists I found a notebook the other day and I was showing my husband about some stuff I had written down about because you know God blesses us with things mm -hmm. God blesses us with us with vehicles and homes and he wants us to take care of those things and we need to be that great example of taking care of those things that he has given to us and there were some things that I had written down about stuff I wanted to get fixed on our house because our siding was messed up and the trim was getting all messed up from the rain and the weather over the years and we've been in that house almost 16 years now and you know I was like Lord you have given us this house and I we need to get these things fixed I said I know you're gonna provide the finances I'm just gonna write all this stuff down and I was showing my husband I said look I found this notebook and I wrote all this stuff down about all this stuff we wanted to get done on the house and I said I checked three things off this list I'm so excited he didn't seem as, as excited as I was but I was excited because I know God is doing some things right Amen. I know he Amen. you know and, and we are all being that great example in our lives that he is blessing us. Amen. 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 So y'all aren't as excited as I am, but okay. I'm tired of uh, you know, even as, even as single parents, you know, we have to have a vision for our family, you know, for yourself. Um, you know, if you want to go to school or if you're trying to get this great job, you know, write it down. Amen. Amen, amen. I have so many lists going. I have so many notebooks in there. They're probably from like 1999. Wow. I need to go through all that stuff though. Start marking stuff off, right? Amen. amen. <laughs> amen. So, um, and like I said, put God in remembrance of his promises. When we write them down, that's what we do. And the scripture says, slowly, steadily, surely the time approaches when the vision has been fulfilled. Wait patiently. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so whatever vision you fathers or single parents have for your family, write it down. Amen? Amen? Be that great example of what God has given to you. Take care of those things. Amen? Amen. Y'all are looking at me like deer in headlights, but it's okay. So as I go into the word today, honoring the fathers, I want to encourage to, to listen to what God is trying to tell you. Take heart to what he is saying. You know, are you being that good example or are you being a bad example? You know, sometimes we have to check ourselves about how we're reacting to things, about our conversation, about what comes out of our mouth, about our words. Amen? Amen. Uh, yeah, we all sometimes have bad days. Sometimes, you know, things don't work out like we planned them. And, you know, we say some things that we regret. We do some things that we regret. But God, our Father, is a forgiving Father. Amen. 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 And His mercy and grace go way further Amen. than we can ever imagine. Amen. 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 You know, so sometimes we have to look at ourselves. You know, it starts with us. We can be that change or hope in somebody's life that that they haven't seen, right? That they haven't that they haven't experienced. Amen. Amen. Um, and you know, some of us talk a good game, and some of us are like, "Oh yeah, I go to church all the time, and you know, I do this and I do that, and you know, I'm in the Word all the time." And, uh, but you know, if you look on there right now and you're, cause we're live right now, you probably only see about four people watching. <laughs> well, you know, but you know, and, and I understand COVID and, and this pandemic going on and you know, people have to be at home and I get that, you know, and there's no judgment there because I know we have to be safe. You know, I don't know what everybody's got going on and what you have health wise going on, you know, but even in here we're, you know, social distancing and wearing masks when we need to and things like that um and then some people give that excuse well i don't have any internet at home well let me tell you you could drive up to the church and sit outside of the parking lot and hit on the internet and you can still watch live and be in your car right um so people just make excuses about things you know and 
And, you know, because we do make it available online. Um, and, and that's why I'm say, saying people talk a good game and, oh, I'm there and I love Jesus and I love God. And, you know, but they got 20 other things to do, 20 other things to do on Sunday. You know, they can't uh, keep that relationship with God and um, commune with him on Sundays as, as, as he tells us in the word. You know, Jesus went to church and some other people think, well, I ain't got to go to church. But Jesus went, though. I'm just saying. Just saying. So, you know, some of us talk a good game, but we are not being true to who we are. We need to be responsible. Mm -hmm. You could be that change in someone's life or that encouragement that they need. And, you know, it's just like Elder Locke had said in one of his messages. Uh, I think he was talking about it last Sunday. Um, you know, you don't go and fuel your car one time and it lasts you months and months and months. No. We have to keep coming here and getting fuel from Wednesday to Sunday, from Sunday to Tuesday, to Tuesday to Wednesday. That's how you get your fuel, and that's how you keep going. But some people are like, oh, I went to church last Sunday. I'm good. I'm all right. But you're not because deep down you're struggling with something. And that's why you need to get here because you could be, God could be putting you in place to do some great things, and you're not in place to receive them. Amen. Amen. So, you know, like we were talking about, you don't have to be that biological father to be an example. You know, think about Mary and Joseph. And when he found out that Mary was pregnant and they ain't even done anything together, right? I can just imagine that conversation. You know, if we would be there back in those days and imagine that conversation when Mary was trying to explain to Joseph that she was pregnant. And they were about, and they, you know, they haven't even been together yet, you know. Uh, but that proves that you don't have to be a sperm donor to be a father, right? Joseph helped raise Jesus, you know? Yeah, and he provided for him, right? And so, you know, but God had that plan for Mary and Joseph to be used, you know, and I'm sure that the Holy Spirit did talk to Joseph and, you know, uh, let him know what was going on, gave him peace about the situation, right? Um, and that, that's in Luke 1 and 35, and I'm not going to go there, but that's where it was talking about uh, when the angel came down to Mary and was telling her that she was going to have a baby. Um, but like I was saying, that story proves that you do not have to, you know, donate the sperm to be the father. And we have to make sure that, um, like I was saying, our conversation and our actions are being that great example Amen. that God is telling you to be. Amen? Amen. Um, and it doesn't even have to be a child that's living in your house. It could be, uh, you know, somebody that uh, is part of this church or, you know, one of your kid's friends or, you know, a friend's friend a friend's kids you know you just never know who you may come in contact with that you need to be that example for right um i tell you i keep jumping ahead of myself so i have to move because there are things I already talked about and i wasn't supposed to talk about them yet <laughs> you know so even like when other kids visit your home you know i remember when you know my kids were growing up and other kids would come to spend the night and um you know we would have to be those examples, you mm -hmm. know? And even in marriage, you have to be that example. Right. We have to teach our boys, you know, it, it's just like, I can't teach my boys how to be men, you know? My husband had to do that part. Mm -hmm. And there were men in this church that helped him along too, that had some hard conversations that maybe they didn't, couldn't talk to my husband about, you know, that they may have talked to somebody in here about, you know? And, um, you know, so it's just things like that. You have to think about things like that, right? You have to be those examples and always be ready Amen. to be that example to somebody. And watch what we say. Amen? Amen? You know, as adults, we just never know who is watching you. Um, and you never know who's going to pick up on how you're reacting to things. Amen? Amen. Um, you know, and, it, and it, like I was talking about our sons, you know, I... It's just like our daughters, too. Um, you have to be that example for them 
so that they're not just uh, the first guy that says I love you they're not just going to say oh okay and, and you know so you have to make sure that you are being that example to them and show them how a man should treat a woman so that Amen. they'll know and that they won't just fall for anything, right? Amen. Um, and, you know, my goddaughter was with us this uh, about a week ago because uh, she had summer school and her parents had to go out of town. So we were keeping her, and I had to take her to cheerleading practice. And I'll tell you what, sometimes these kids can really test you. Not that she did, you know, but, you know, the devil always puts something out there, and you've got to be on your P's and Q's, right? That's right. Um, but she had to go to cheerleading practice, and my, my goddaughter, she's just so beautiful. And she's got these long legs, you know, and so I'm taking her to cheer practice, and my husband came to uh, Bible study, and she came out there, you know, walking out there with some shorts on. I said, girl, does your mom and dad let you go with them shorts on? And she was like, uh, yeah, and you know me, I'm, I'm like looking through them, making sure I can't see through, and I said, oh, no, girl, you got some other shorts? Because uh, you can't get me in trouble on my watch. <laughs> no. And she was like, oh, yeah, my mom and dad let me wear these. And I was like, mm, I don't think so. I don't think they do. I don't think so. I said, girl, you're not going to get me in trouble. And I said, I was stretching them myself, trying to see if I could see through them. I said, oh, no, girl, you, if you ain't got no other shorts, you're going to wear these leggings. <laughs> girl, I know it's 102, but you're going to be sweating it out tonight. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but uh, not on my watch. No, Amen. no we're not Amen. doing it. No, mm -mm. not today. You know, and, and you know, I didn't raise girls, but let me tell you, I was one one time her age. So, uh, yeah, yeah, she was, uh, she didn't think anything about it, you know, but uh, I said, oh, no, you know, but, you know, her and I had a little conversation about it. And I said, no, you know, you need to start, you need to check yourself, you know, make sure it's good, you know, you're not showing anything. And, you know, being that example for her, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if y'all remember before all this COVID stuff happened, you know, but my grandson, he, one day at church, he had to test us a little bit. I had to take him outside and had a little conversation with him, you know. Uh, but it's things like that, you know, we have to... Um, if you see something, you need to say something, right? Amen. That's the thing. Amen. And, you know, he was telling my, my uh, daughter-in-law no, and I was like, oh, no, he ain't telling her no. And, uh, you know, so I took him outside, and we had a little conversation about some things. And um, <laughs> my quotes, conversation about some things. Um, but now all I got to do is look at him. And he'll, I think he has flashbacks, you know, <laughs> you know uh, yeah, about that conversation, right? Uh, but now he knows, you know. I got to, I got to keep it right. I, you know, he'll, 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 he, and you can even see him. He'll be about to say something, and he'll say, and then he'll whisper it. I'm like, uh, I still heard you what you said. <laughs> I still heard what you said. So, um, you know, we have to continue to be that good example and not that bad example. Amen. Amen. And what we have to know is that we are trying to prevent them from having problems later in life, right? Uh, and we're, we're supposed to be raising them so that they are a productive part of society, right? And that's why we have to be that great example. And don't get me wrong about what I'm trying to say here because um, sometimes we do our part and we do our part to the best of our ability but they still get led astray. Amen. But at some point, they're grown, they're adults, and they know better, you know? Even as, I mean, even as teenagers, I remember when I was a teenager and my stepdad and my mom would try to tell me stuff, couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> it, but guess what? I learned later, <laughs> you know, later in life, <laughs> I said, oh, y'all were right, you know? Y'all were right about what you said, you know? So don't get me wrong, you know, sometimes we can do everything we can and they still make bad choices. But at some point when they are old enough to know better, it's not your fault. It's their fault. Amen. That's their fault. That's on them. Amen? Amen? You've been the example that you should be. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Proverbs 22 and 6. I guess I've talked long enough. 
Proverbs 22 and 6. Proverbs 22 and 6, and it says, Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. And, you know, and that's just us training our children in the way that they should go. You know, if you continue to lead them, eventually they're going to fall back on that. Eventually they're going to remember that. You know, it's kind of like math and riding a bicycle. It comes back to you once you start needing it. Um, and I remember even with our son, Justin, you know, there were some things, uh, you know, back in December when they were here for Christmas, he was telling me some stuff and he was like, yeah, you know, I, I know what y'all are talking about now. I understand, mm -hmm. you know, there are some things that I, I get it, you know, and yeah, it took, I mean, my gosh, he just turned 29 and it took all this time, you know, well, he probably realized it years ago. He's just admitting it now. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it will happen. And that's what I'm trying to get you fathers and parents to understand is that it may not look, it may not seem like it's sinking in right now, and it may not look like it's sinking in, but it is. Amen? Amen. It's in there. Amen? Um. And, you know, it, it's, it's just like here in church, you know, some people are scared to say something to other people's kids because they think that they're going to get mad at them. But that is your, that's what God has called you to do. He has called you to be that example. You know, if I see some kid in the restroom playing around, I don't care who kid, whose kid it is. Uh, you know. Uh, I'm going to get you, and I'm going to say, where's your parents at? <laughs> you need to come again because they're playing in the toilet or something, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's just things like that. You know, sometimes we're scared to say something, but you could possibly be the only example that that child has, you know. And that's your opportunity, right? Amen. 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 <laughs> um, so let's go to um, let's go to Colossians 3 and 21 and I'm just going to touch on this for a minute Colossians 3 and 21 Colossians 3 and 21 Amen Amen, Amen. It said, this is the NLT. It says, fathers, do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. Amen? So it says, do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. To cause anger or resentment or feeling aggravated or, or irritated, you know? Um, it's like if, you know, if, if God is... If God were a God that was always pointing out our faults, how would that make us feel? You know, and that's just like our earthly father. You know, if you're always pointing out your child's faults and not encouraging them and trying to lead them in the right direction, you know, you're really just kind of pointing the finger at them all the time if that's all that you're doing is pointing out their faults. And, you know, God doesn't do that to us. That's right. You know? And, that, and we shouldn't do that to our children either. Amen. Amen. You know, because if you're Amen. always pointing out their faults and not um, praising them for what they're doing that's good, you know, and there's a way to do it too, of still being that good example and explaining it to them without discouraging them. Amen? Amen? So we just have to be careful, right? Because God doesn't do that to us. He doesn't discourage us. Amen? Amen. Yeah, he disciplines us. But it's in a way that is loving. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all don't seem to, you know. Amen. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, it, and we are supposed to discipline them. You know, just like, you know, we get disciplined, right? You know, sometimes we do something wrong and, or, you know, we do something that we know God told us don't go that way, you know. And, you know, we end up, you know, something ends up happening or, you know. Our car breaks down, but with God's grace and mercy, he makes a way out of that, right? Mm -hmm. Thank God. 
Thank God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Um, you know, and it does say in Proverbs 13 and 24 and in Proverbs 22 and 15 that if we spare the rod, we, we really hate our children because we're not chastising them and we're not disciplining them and, and, you know, leading them in the right direction. And how would we feel if God was that way to us? You know, what kind of father is that if they're not, um, you know, disciplining you and telling you, look, you know, I told you to go this way. You went the other way, but because of my grace and mercy, I'm going to, you know, lead you the long way around, but there's going to be some problems along the way, right? We all know that. So let's go to, um, we talked about that a little bit already. Well, let's go to, let, let's go to Ephesians 6 and 4, Amen. I have to talk about myself for a little bit. Ephesians 6 and 4. Ephesians 6 and 4. It says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And this is kind of what I was saying before. Um, I remember... Um, I remember when in school they still had school paddlings and whoopings when that you get. I mean, I'm probably telling y'all my age, but I remember when we used to get whoopings in school. And I remember one time I can't remember what happened. I think this one little bad boy uh, stole my sweater, and they were playing keep away, and I was trying to get it back. Well, I got in trouble with all them, and I ended up getting paddled. Wrong place at the wrong time, right? But I tell you what, I never did nothing again. It straightened me right up, all right. <laughs> straightened me right up. I think that was like in third or fourth grade. Um, but just like I was saying, don't be discouraging to our children. You know, children that look up to you, they are looking for that encouragement. Amen. Um, and 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 sometimes by things that that are being said to them, uh, it can break their spirit. You know, and, and so we don't want to be discouraging because God doesn't break our spirit. God is a loving father to us, mm -hmm. yes. you know, and, and you have to kind of flip it and say, well, you know, how would God treat me if this, if you know, if he was disciplining me or if he was trying to show me the right way? Amen. So we just need to try to be that great example to them. Amen. Um, and not break their spirit. Amen. So when our children do well, encourage them. When they have problems, be encouraging and supportive as God is to us. Amen? Do not be discouraging. And, you know, sometimes, um, and I, I had talked to my mom a little bit about this. I remember when I was growing up because sometimes parents act like uh, nothing is wrong. And they'll, I guess they kind of feel like, oh, nothing's wrong. It'll just kind of go away on its own or fix itself, you know? <laughs> um, and during those times, we, we really need to be, um, you really need to open your eyes to those things. Because sometimes a child could really be struggling with something. And, and we're not taking it serious. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, and I remember having some conversations, even with my sisters, you know, about stuff that families just kind of uh, sweep under the rug, kind of like. And sometimes those things need to be talked about. And sometimes we do have to have some uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. And they are, that sometimes they are uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know, but we still need to be that example. And in order to be that example, there may be some uncomfortable conversations that we do have to have so that we can be that great example that God is calling us to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. I must be boring y'all. No. Because no. no. I tell you what. Amen. 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 You know, it's, an, it's, an, it's important to be that example also. Because when a child sees their father treating their mother a certain way, that is a good example mm -hmm. that they are going to grow up to learn. Amen. And when you're treating their mother bad or, or, you know, treating their spouses bad, that's what they see, and that's what they continue on with, and that curse just keeps on. 
when they see a father treat a mother the way that she is supposed to be treated, they expect that from their spouse when Amen. they grow up. Amen. 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 And it also helps them in choosing a mate. Amen. 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 Y'all don't seem like y'all are convinced, but okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So as I get ready to close, and I know I haven't been up here very long, but it's Father's Day, so let's let's get the day started, right, and start celebrating. Amen. So as I close, I want you to think about something. God loves you as his daughter and as his son. Amen? Amen. It does get hard sometimes. But God loves you. Amen. As his son and daughter. Amen. Amen. And it says in Romans 10, 9 through 13, amen, that God loves you so much that he gave his son for you. You are his child. Amen. And so we need to continue to be that example and learn what we're learning in here in these walls and over the airwaves we need to live it apply it and share it amen just as we always say every every week amen. right amen. because god gave his son for us and and god our father is really the great example that we should be trying to follow um but god loves you so much and all we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we are saved. Amen. God did that for us. Amen. His children. Amen. Amen? He is our great father. Amen? Amen? Amen. So as the deacons and ministers come up and I close out, um, in 1 John 4, 9 through 10, and I'm not going to go there, but please write it down. Um, it says that God loved us and he sent his one son as a sacrifice for us all, his children, that we may be saved. That is a great act that God our Father did for us to save us, to give us a chance. Amen? Amen. Chance after chance after chance after chance, right? Amen. 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 So you have a decision today. Do you accept God as your father, a true father that has unconditional love for his children, which is us? Amen. Amen. He is a healer. He is patient. He is encourager. Amen. Amen. And I encourage you today, as the head of your house, to put God first. Amen. 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 Put, I dare you to put God first. And I guarantee you things will change in your life if you put God first. And I always say this in my life too. Um, you know, God is first in my life. My husband is not first. God is first in my life because of what God has done for me. Amen. Then my husband, right? God, my father, is first. And I guarantee you, if as, as a father of your household, if you put God first, Amen. he will change things in your life so much. Amen. I tell you what, it will be like, oh my goodness, you will get dizzy just thinking about what God can do for you. Amen. 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 So I encourage you to put God first in your life. And, I, and, and you, as a child of God, encourage your family members to do that. Be that example. Right. Amen? Amen? Be that example. And I encourage you today to do better for your families and be that great example that God is in our life. Mm -hmm. Be that example in somebody else's life too. Be that example for your children. Amen? Amen. Amen. As the deacons and ministers come up and I'm going to turn it over to my husband. Amen? Amen. She said I had to be patient with God. <laughs> she 
told y'all from the beginning. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Lord, and welcome to the Lord's Day. Doesn't apply to fathers, but this applies to, to parents. This applies to uh, adults yes. mm -hmm. in general. Amen? Amen. And we have to consider our actions because there are those who are coming up that are watching us. And a lot of times we don't think, you know, anyone's watching us. We get like Charles Barkley. I'm no, I'm nobody's example. But you know what? Whether you know it or not, you are an example. Amen. Somebody is watching you. Somebody has questions and they're watching how you act. They're watching your character and they're getting their questions answered. Now, are they getting the right answer? We don't know. <laughs> what type of character do you have? How are you treating your spouse? You know, are you are you hitting one another? That's not a great example for your kids to see because when they grow up, they think hitting one another is a part of the marriage and it's not. No one should ever lay their hands on one another. Amen. Amen. Uh, are you are you treating each other with love? Are you uh, uh, cussing each other out in front of the kids? You know, one thing in the military they taught us was they called it tact. Mm -hmm. You gotta have tact. Mm -hmm. So you 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 about to get on somebody, you just take them to the side yeah. and you talk to them there. Yeah. You don't blast it out so everybody can hear it. But well, this is the way you do it, even with your kids or those who are, uh, are coming up under you. Just like she said, I understand you don't have to be uh, uh, the donor to be the father. Amen. 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 It's just like when we say, uh, we use the example, you know, any anybody can plant a seed, but it takes a farmer to raise a crop. Amen. 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 So just because somebody planted the seed, they don't make them the daddy. That's it. But the one that's raising that child, the one that's there when that child gets hurt, the one that's, that's, that's there when that child has sports events and supporting that child, the one when that child comes home is helping that child with the homework and, and that child has questions. And that child may even be an adult. And now they're coming and they have questions and you're there. Amen. You're answering them questions. You're giving the guidance that you're supposed to give. That's what makes you a father. Amen. That's Amen. what makes you a mother. Amen. That's what makes you a great example. Amen? Amen. So continue to move forward. Continue to be who God has created you to be. And if it's, you know, all of us should be striving to be better. Amen. You know, in my prayers, I pray, Lord, help me to be a better husband. Amen. Help me to be a better father. Help me to be a better son to you. Amen. Help me to be a better joint heir to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Help Amen. me to be, you know, we're not perfect, but we're all striving to be better. That's right. That's right. Amen? Amen? So continue to, to, as she was saying, continue to be that example, that great example. Teach your men, if we don't, those daughters that's coming up under us, if we do not teach them how a man is supposed to treat a woman, just as she said, they're gonna, your daughter's gonna give her the first clown that comes along, and he's gonna be doing things to her that should not be done, and the only reason she thinks it's the right thing, you know, he, he hits her in the eye, and she goes, oh, he loves me because he hit me. She thinks that because she was never taught that this is not the way that a man is supposed to treat a woman. Amen. 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 And it's, it's, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. You know, I had some hard conversations with my boys. I sat them at the table. And you know our church folk is, they don't want to talk about them talks. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, if we don't talk about it, it just goes away. Oh, you know, <laughs> I'm talking about church folk. I'm talking about people in pool pits, stuff like that. I, I said, look, yeah, so what? I'm a pastor. You don't think I'm going to talk to my boys about condoms? Hey, you better. You better. Yes. Sit down at the table, fellas. We're going to have a little talk. Oh, good. Oh, good. Right. We break the props out. <laughs> I broke the props out. I can see my youngest son, boy, you know, he's he 20, 25, he'll be 25 this year. At that time, when we broke them props out, we got to talking about stuff, 
I can see him at the table. He's like, I thought he was about to lose everything. I was like, hey, this is, I know right now it's unappealing. You don't want to hear about it. But I need to tell you and educate you now because I know that you're, you're I know that you are a child of God. But in the same way that you're a child of God, you're going to be tempted. Amen. And are you going to pass every test? No. You don't pass every test in school. You sure ain't going to pass every test. Amen. No. No. You're going to fail sometimes. Just brush yourself off, get up, retake it, move on. Amen. 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 So in order to prevent you from failing miserably, I'm going to teach you about this now. Amen. Now we, what, what people do, we allow the folks on the streets to teach our children instead of us teaching our children. And when we allow the people on the streets to teach our children, then we wonder why, oh, well, I don't understand. I never taught them nothing like that. I never taught them nothing like that. Why are they acting this way? Because you weren't being the example. Amen? Amen. So a wonderful message, First Lady. Amen. We're going to take this and we're going to apply it to our lives. Amen. And we're going to continue to strive to be that greater example that God has called us to be. Amen. 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 Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today? Yes. Let's sing. I want to say happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Amen. 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 Happy Father's Amen. Day. You know, as she was closing out her message, she went into uh, uh, how... God gave his only begotten son so that we can be saved and all we have to do is simply accept him. Amen. Amen. All we have to do is believe in him. Amen. All we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Amen. That's all it takes. You know, some of us think it takes a, a, a seminary class. You know, we got to go to seminary school. And, and, you know, no, you don't have to do all that to be saved. In order to be saved, all you got to do is simply trust in him. Amen. Amen. So if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're going to offer this up to you today because he wants to come into your heart. Amen. The question is, as he knocks at that door, will you open up and allow him to come in? He wants to be there. He wants to be your savior. Amen. He wants you to have a loving father. Understand, some of us grew up and our fathers weren't there like they were supposed to be. Some of us grew up and we had some horrible relationships with some of our fathers. But understand, the Bible says when when, when father or when mother and father forsake you, he will be there. Amen. Amen. He will never forsake you. Amen. 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 So he is our greatest example, but in order for you to get to know your father, you're going to have to get a relationship with him. Amen. Amen. And this is how you do it. Please pray with me. Father, father I open my heart now. I open my heart now. And I ask that Jesus steps in. And I ask that Jesus steps in. Take the remains of my life. Take the remains of my life. Make something of them. Make something of them. Use me for your purpose. Use me for your purpose. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. heart that Jesus, that Jesus died, and rose died and rose on the third day. On the third day. For me. For me. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. That Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Thank you for saving me. 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 Thank you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I need you to understand that you are saved. And I don't know why you're not thinking that just because you gave your life to Jesus today that you may feel, you know, you may not feel different, but I promise you, you are different. Things have changed for you. You are now the new creature, a new creation in Christ. Why? You have a new father. Yes. And this father has never left anyone. Amen. 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 So whatever you need, 
Talk to your father. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He has the answer. He has the product. He has the information. He has everything you need according to his riches and glory. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this message that went forth. We thank you for the messenger that you used today, yes, Father God. Yes, yes. Father, we're going to take this message and we're going to apply it to our lives, Father yes. God. And we're going to not just apply it, but we're going to live it, Father God. And Father God, we're going to share it with others out there. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those who are online right now, Father God, those who are here, Lord, special blessing to those who are, has actually come out, Father God. And we're, uh, uh, we thank you for those who are online, Father God. Bless them, Father. And Father God, help your people to see and understand about you, about yes. their faith yes. in you, Father God. Because according to your word, you have protected us. Amen. According to your word, we have been <laughs> delivered, Father God. We have been healed of all diseases, all including COVID-19. Yes. Father, yes. thank you for what you have done, Father God. And Father God, we would not allow the winds and the waves of COVID-19 to prevent us from walking on the water that came across us. Ah, thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you this day in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Amen.